Well, good morning. Thanks for coming to church today. Now, I'm going to have to ask you to go ahead and pray for me. Um, I'm going to be distracted the whole rest of the day because I just discovered my main button is loose on this coat. Got a daughter going to college for fashion and sewing and all of that and got loose buttons. I don't know what that's all about. Hopefully, she can fix that for me maybe today or I'm not wearing this coat again. And so you pray that I can get over that because I open it and close it a bunch of times during the service and it'll be loose. So uh, I think you maybe have not been praying like you should for me. So let's go ahead and tune that in here in the next few minutes. But I do appreciate you coming to church this morning. And I know some of you had already gotten up today and went to Sunday school with Brother Matt and Miss Miranda. And we certainly want to praise the Lord uh, for that. And we want to say happy birthday to Miss Miranda. Today is her birthday. And uh, I think Brother Matt had one. Was it this week he had his as well? And so we want to say happy birthday to Brother Matt and Miss Miranda. And we sure thank the Lord for them. Appreciate their influence. Thank God for letting them serve with us here. And uh, I watched a little bit there of the, the Facebook Live that they were doing for a Sunday school lesson. And looked like a good number got on there. So I praise the Lord for that. And thank you for coming to church today. Uh, get your family gathered around. And let's go ahead and get focused. This is the Lord's day. It doesn't matter if we're here or if we're there. We're supposed to give this. This day to the Lord and give some of it particularly real focused attention to his worship and we know we believe in gathering together forsake not the assembling of yourselves together and that is the plan uh, we plan to gather together as soon as it's possible but until then we want to gather like this thank God he has given us the technology to be able to do so and so I appreciate you coming. Let's pray, and we'll ask the Lord to help us in the rest of the service today. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, God, that we can come together, at least through the means of technology. Lord, what a blessing it has been to us uh, when I was preparing even the message today. Uh, that particular thought came to me, Lord, about what a blessing it is to be uh, able to connect with people in different ways, even though we're not able to be together socially. Father, we thank you that we can use the technology. We ask you to put your hand on it right now. Pray that you'd remove all hindrances. Lord, get the devil and his forces out of the wires and out of the, the air that could hinder these things. We pray that you would let it go forth clearly. And Lord, I pray that you'd bless all the other churches around the world as well that are doing live streaming and different things like that. We pray that you'd bless them. And Father, we ask you that you would meet with us. Now, I don't want us just to uh, waste time. And uh, Lord, I, I don't want us just to go through the motions today. And so I pray that you would let your spirit be real and powerful. Thank you for how you already met with me in my office this morning. And I pray and trust you're going to do that in here for us as well. And Lord, bless every bit of the service. Bless the singing. Uh, bless the, the preaching. And Lord, help us to uh, be moved in our heart from the truths of the Word of God. And Lord, if there's anybody watching that's been backslid and away from you, anybody watching that's lost, I pray that they'd be drawn to you. They'd get saved before it's too late. And Lord, we love you. Thank you for everything we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, we're going to get the words to the congregational song up on the screen. I'm going to go over and try to play it on the piano again like we did Wednesday night. So give me just a second to get over there. I think I'm going to have some of these security guys, these streaming guys, start testifying or something while I'm walking to the piano. Maybe Brother Keith up there can give a word on his heart. He's got, he's got a word on his heart, maybe. Now, I want you to focus on these words. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. Pay attention, too. We're going to change keys in the song a couple times. But really focus in on that last line. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. You know, a lot of times we talk about that. And we talk about it after something good has happened in our life. And we'll say, boy, after the youth rally, we can say, if ever I love thee. Or after camp meeting, we can say, if ever I love thee. I believe we ought to be able to look at him during this storm that we're in, during this uh, sickness, during this time of confusion, and realize well, how hard it would be to go through this without the Lord. And how awful it would be to try to go through this without faith and without hope from the Lord. And so I think we ought to be able to say today, and mean it from our heart, if ever I love thee, my Jesus tis now. Let's try and sing it. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee all the follies of sin I resign. My great 
gracious Redeemer, my Savior art Thou. If ever I love Thee, my Jesus, tis now. I love Thee because Thou as first love at me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If is now on the last verse in mansions of glory and endless delight I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright I'll sing with the glitter is now go back to that first verse brother Tyler if you would let's sing that first verse again in this higher key and you mean it from your heart sing in your house now get your family to sing focus on how good the Lord has been to us my Jesus I love thee my Jesus I love thee I know thou art mine for thee and all the Father Savior art thou If ever I love thee My Jesus tis now The last line If ever I love thee My Jesus tis now And all God's people say it My Savior, I love thee. How about that line? I know thou art mine. There's a lot of people around this world that do not have that assurance. And if you're sitting there this morning watching this service and you have the assurance that you know Jesus is your Savior, you've got more than most people, then you ought to be able to look to heaven and say, if ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. Let me give you some praise reports and some prayer requests this morning. Uh, as I've already said, we praise the Lord for Brother Matt and Miss Miranda and wish them a happy birthday. And then we want to praise the Lord that Brother Sam Phillips is doing so much better and was able to go home this week. Brother Terrell Hopkins was able to go home this week, the preacher in Georgia. And then uh, Brother Hoffman, one of our missionaries, and uh, I believe it's in Panama, <clears throat> I believe it is, Costa Rica maybe now, uh, Brother Hoffman has had the COVID and was in the hospital, and he was able to go home and is doing quite a bit better. And so we want to praise the Lord for that. And then also uh, the Lutrix, they have had an up and down week, and so we want to be sure and praise the Lord for the good, but then pray for him as Brother Lutrick has made another turn back to the worst that's been put back in ICU. He was out of ICU and off the ventilator, but then has had to go back. And so we praise the Lord that he had those good days, and then want to pray for him. want to praise the Lord also that I had the privilege and the opportunity this week to record a message and preach for some teenagers in Australia. And so Brother Marvin came and helped me record it, and I preached. I just preached just like a wild man in a room with just Brother Marvin trying to get him right with 
helping God and uh, working on him. He's heard a lot of preaching over the last couple of weeks, and so I appreciate him coming in. And what a blessing to be able to preach in that meeting. To be honest with you, they've asked me to come to Australia three or four years in a row. I've had to turn them down just because of scheduling different things. And so it was a blessing that God used the, the crazy circumstances that we're in right now to give me the opportunity to preach and to have an influence there to a bunch of teenagers. I'm not sure exactly when he's going to show it, so if you'd be praying about that, pray that when he shows that, I preached about the Bible, they can have confidence in the Word of God. So pray the Lord to use that, but it's certainly a praise report that he gave me that opportunity. And then uh, Brother Jason told me this morning that he's going to have the opportunity over the next couple of weeks to speak through Zoom and different things to some youth groups as well. And so thank the Lord for how he can give us influence. We want to praise him for that. And then I want to thank the church and we want to praise the Lord for literally a truck bed full of food that we were able to send uh, to the county. And so thank you church for that. Appreciate Brother Chad Worley delivering that. And so that is certainly a praise. Now I want to ask you to pray about these things. Pray for Brother Nathan Reed, our missionary uh, over there. I guess it's in Romania, I believe it is. And so I want you to be praying for Brother Nathan as he has uh, been to the hospital. He has uh, been tested for COVID. They haven't, I don't think that um, let me make sure I get this right here. Um, I'm not certain if he has been tested positive. Let me look at it. He has not been tested, but they're pretty sure he has. COVID-19 it was really bad last night. Uh, high fever, coughing, not able to hardly breathe. And uh, they don't really want to uh, put him in a hospital because if they do, they'll move him to another town and he'll be quarantined and the family won't be able to see him. And so uh, they have asked us if we would to pray for Brother Nathan that God would just touch him and help him. And certainly uh, the, the COVID-19 is no joke wherever you are, but I would not want to be sick like that in another country. Uh, and so we want to pray for Brother Nathan and his family. Also continue to pray for Brother Sam Phillips, as you would, if you would, as he's recovering. And that uh, nerve issue with his foot, really bad, uh, frustrating. And so pray for him that the Lord would touch that. I mentioned Brother Lutrick in Texas. If you would pray for him having to be put back in ICU. And then pray for Brother Brian Wilson. The Lord has opened up an opportunity for him to preach for another church's drive-in service today. And so pray that the Lord would fill Brother Brian with the Spirit. It's tough to preach in kind of these different circumstances. So ask the Lord to help him. And then continue to pray for our health care heroes, what I've been calling the group on my phone. Had a good prayer meeting with a bunch of them on Wednesday night. I'll we'll try and do that again this week. And also some other folks, folks that work in food services, grocery stores and stuff, they're having to work right through it. Everybody in the world's coming into those stores. And, and so there's great anxiety and, and stuff in those uh, all those businesses that, that people are very, I think about uh, delivery trucks, think about UPS and people like that, where they're touching everything and going all over the place. So just try and remember the folks who are, are thankful to be able to work, no doubt, but stressed about the COVID and trying not to contract it, trying not to get it and take it home. And then, uh, as I have mentioned the last couple of services, pray for those who are affected financially who have been laid off, who uh, have not been able to work, and some who are waiting on um, unemployment and things like that. So try and remember and pray for these. And then last of all, Miss Wendy Tinsley uh, had to go back in the hospital last night with heart issues. She's in Grace Hospital and uh, got her, you know, of course, can't be with her. Brother Dwayne can't be in there with her. She's quarantined off to try to keep her from getting uh, COVID. And so just pray for her that they can figure out exactly what's going on with her heart troubles and then pray, obviously, protection around her that she would not get sicker while she's in there. And so let's go ahead and pray again. Now take some time right now and bow your head, bow your heart before God, you young people. Uh, if you're looking down at your phone and messing around, I want you to stop doing that unless the phone is where you're watching this. And I want you to uh, pray. Ask the Lord to speak to you today. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Ask Him to bless the people. And if you have not been sick and your family has not been hurt financially and stuff, young people, you ought to thank the Lord for that. If you've got a good home, listen, some young people, uh, when school got out, it was, it was a nightmare for some young people because now they're going to be all day at that house that is not good, to them parents that are not good in a circumstance that is not good. And some of you young people are living the life of luxury and uh, being well taken care of. So you ought to bow your head as well and thank God for his goodness. Let's do that. Heavenly Father, we praise you this morning for your goodness. We praise you for how you take care of us, even in times of trouble. I'm thankful that I can say from my heart, if ever I loved you, my Jesus, tis now. And I can mean it, Lord, you've been good to me through this, right through the COVID. Me and my family, Lord, as we uh, contracted it and uh, had to deal with it, Lord, I look around and see how it was so much better for us than it has been for others, and they're better people than we are. So it's just your grace and your mercy, and 
I praise you for it. Thank you for some of our friends that have gotten better, shown improvement, come off the ventilator and different things. Lord, I praise you for touching each one. We thank you, Lord, for letting Brother Sam be home, Brother Hopkins, and uh, Brother Hoffman. Thank you for Brother Kenny Baldwin and Brother Harmon, all the different ones that we do know of. And, Lord, we praise you for that. Thank you for giving us opportunity to minister, Lord, through the Internet and preach to Australian young people this week. And Brother Jason, they're going to get the chance to minister to people from different parts of the country. And Brother Brian preaching. We thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, for the truckload of food that was given this week. That We can try to be a blessing to some others. And, Lord, I praise you for our church people that are so faithful to give. Bless now the needs, Lord, that have been mentioned. Please touch Brother Nathan and Miss Teresa. We ask you, Lord, that he would not have to go to the hospital, that you would turn that breathing around right now, that you would give him improvement, Lord, that you would strengthen his lungs, that you would help him. Father, we ask you to be with Brother Sam and particularly that nerve issue that's affecting his foot. We pray that you would just supernaturally give healing in that. Touch Brother Lutrick, Lord. He's back in ICU. We pray that you would give the doctors and nurses wisdom, strengthen him, Lord. Help Brother Brian as he preaches today. Fill him with the Holy Ghost, we pray, like never before. Be with all the health care workers, Lord, and also the people in other industries that are putting them kind of at risk, if you will. I pray that you would protect them and strengthen them. Lord, bless the people who are in charge of some of these businesses and, Lord, the stress that they're under trying to figure it all out. And uh, Lord, I pray that you'd bless them. We ask you to be with those that are struggling financially because maybe their job has been cut or their hours have been greatly cut. We pray that you would supernaturally provide and take care of each one. And then help Miss Wendy. We ask you to strengthen her, Lord. Touch her and the doctors. We pray, Father, that you would... Um, Bless them. Keep her safe while she's in there and they're dealing with the heart issues. Don't let her get the virus, we pray, or any sickness uh, beyond what she's dealing with. Lord, we love you. We thank you that you hear us. And we pray that you'd bless the rest of the service now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <laughs> well, I want to have the choir sing one. And uh, I, I want to encourage you to worship this morning. I mean that. I, I want to encourage you to ask God to speak to your heart. Now, this is a song that when we were singing it in the service, we didn't even end up having preaching that night. And uh, the Lord began to stir and people began to get help. And when I hear this song, I almost always comment on the fact that if you're thirsty, you ask for it. And so I would, I would encourage you to ask for a drink from the Lord today in this song, in the special song, and then in the preaching. And so uh, feel free to lift your hand. Feel free to worship a little bit. I thank the Lord I get texts from time to time about people saying amen and crying and worshiping uh, at home. I believe uh, Miss Kira, somebody texted me and said Brother Andy was worshiping this past uh, Wednesday night, I believe it was, or maybe last Sunday. And so I want to encourage you to do that while they play the choir singing, Lord, give me a drink, that whale song. Go ahead and play that, fellas. I was going to the well again the other day, not knowing that my life was going to change. There I met a man who told of living water. He said that I
if you only ask him to just trust him and you'll be forever his holy name. I'm going to uh, forego the announcements. You guys remind me to do them at the end. And we're going to go ahead and move very quickly, Brother Tyler, into that special song. And if you want to open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 7, you can go ahead and do that. But I'm going to praise the Lord for that fresh drink of water he gave me in my office this morning. I'm thankful that we don't have to be with everybody else to get a drink from God. You don't have to be. I encourage you. Ask God to touch you this morning. Ask him to speak to you. I'm about to play you a song that stirred me up as well this morning. And uh, the Manarese family sang for us here a couple times through the years. And they were singing on the Sunday night after our youth rally. And of course, they've been through some storms with McKenzie battling cancer and all the different things. And um, I just want you to take a few minutes while this special is being played and try to get your mind off of what we're dealing with right now and just look back at the faithfulness of God. And you ought to be able to say amen when they're singing this song. You ought to be able to look back to how good God has been in your life, to the times when you were dry, when you were empty, when you were frustrated, and God showed up and touched your heart. Just like Becca was singing there and the choir was singing, and he filled your soul with joy. We ought to look back and see those faithful times. And we ought to be able to say amen to the words of this song. So go ahead, Brother Tyler, play that. Genesis chapter 7. Listen now. Say amen in front of your kids so they can know you are testifying that you agree with what they're singing right here in this song. Go ahead and play that. Bless his holy name. We're all on a journey. And we're called to walk by faith. There will always be the mountains and valleys in our way. But right here in this moment, may our strength be renewed. As we recall what God has done and how we've seen Him move. Is there anybody here who's found Him? Here found joy in the midst of sorrow, peace in the storm. Oh. 
it's hard to see. But be bold and courageous and follow where he leads. Greater is the one who's in us than he that is in the world. So child of God, remember the power. Go ahead and drag that back, Brother Tyler. Let's see if we can play. I don't know. Just kind of find it anywhere there in the middle. It don't matter. In that service now, uh, I get up right after that, and I, I share a testimony. And I challenge the people not to take for granted that they are physically able to be in that service. Brother Mike, Brother Mike Blanton here. Appreciate him being on security for us. And uh, I had just got a text sitting in my chair right there during that service from Lee Davis. Cancer in his body, and he texted Amen. And uh, boy, what a, what a joy. I was listening to it this morning with mixed emotions because I thought, buddy, he's praising God this morning uh, a lot better than he was there in his sick bed. But I want you to know something. You ought, to, you ought to look and realize what a blessing it would be to be here today and what a blessing it was to be there on that day. And maybe on that service, you didn't worship like you could have. And I'm going to play a little more of that. Now, I like how it says, have found joy in the midst of sorrow. Well, that's what God has made real in the midst of this last month, is that in the midst of craziness, and I mean just uh, un, un, unimaginable kind of situations, and I'm not talking about that this is the worst thing you know, that anybody's ever been through. You know how I feel about that. But I'm going to say, I, I, didn't, I didn't imagine this. I hadn't foreseen uh, this in our life, in the life of our church, in the life of my family. But I'm going to thank the Lord that in the midst of all that, He has given joy at different times. And so let's just worship a few more minutes on that, and then we'll jump into Genesis chapter 7. And I want to encourage you, don't miss the chance. Boy, look back at the things we have taken for granted. And uh, to be able to be in that service, if you were there that night, what a wonderful time it was. I like seeing all them college boys there from Vision Baptist College worshiping different people shouting. And so let's hear a little bit more of that, Brother Tyler. Play about the last half of that. Let's, let's listen to some more, and then we'll get in the Bible. Go ahead. Brother Daniel Leffert, it said it. He said a loud amen. So he's texting as well. Sorrow, peace in the storm. Oh, for tomorrow, and if she needs time and time again, just say amen. Sometimes through the darkness, it gets hard to see, but be bold and courageous. And follow where he leads. Greater is the one who's in us than he that is in the world. So, child of God, remember the power.
ought to stir your heart a little bit. I hope that it has. Genesis chapter 7. And again, fellas, please don't let me forget to make announcements in church. Stay with me so that I can make the announcements at the very end. I just felt the Lord moving around there. Didn't want to stop in the middle of that and make a bunch of announcements. Genesis chapter 7, though, verse 5. Tell you what, I may go ahead and make some of them right now while you're getting open there to Genesis 7, verse 5. We're going to have drive-in service. I want to make sure you get that announcement. Drive-in service next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. Hadn't looked at the weather, and if the weather gets involved, we may switch it around like we did last time. But that is the plan, have another drive-in service, fine-tune it a little bit, hopefully get it uh, even a little better than it was last time. And so I want to praise the Lord for that. And then uh, also we have, uh, we have been asked by the county, different churches are taking on different places. We've been asked to take on Rose Hill Nursing Home up here behind us and their staff to be an encouragement to them. We're going to do some uh, act of encouragement one a week over the next few weeks. And so be thinking about that. Might get some of you kids and some of you uh, folks involved in making up some cards and different things. We'll buy them some donuts. We'll do some different things. And if you've got some ideas on something we could do for them uh, one week to be an encouragement, keep that in mind. And then uh, like we took up food last week, we're probably going to take some food up this week for our bus families. Uh, we have uh, targeted 25 bus families that we know could use some help. And we have kind of lost contact through this. And so this is a way to reconnect. And so this week, if you would, we'll tell you exactly when, but buy up a few extra uh, non-perishable goods. And we're going to take these together for our bus families. Let our bus captains take them to their homes, put some gospel tracks in there, try to be a blessing to those families. And so uh, keep that in mind. Brother Charlie also asked me to announce that uh, we would uh, be having another children's uh, program in the next couple of days. And I uh, may be getting involved with that one as well. So be looking forward to that and have your kids watch those. Genesis chapter 7. Thank the Lord for the good spirit already this morning. And I won't keep you too awful long. Uh, I did hear a funny joke. I'll give you that right before we get into the Bible. But there was a husband and he was standing in the bedroom using the scale. Standing on the scale. Now, if you've been anything like me, this is quarantine. You've eaten a lot of stuff and you've eaten a lot of bad stuff. Especially right here at Easter. Got the Easter, Easter basket full of candy and I can't keep my hand out of it. And so he had been doing that and he's standing on the scale and when his wife walked in and saw him uh, he was looking at the scale he was sucking his belly in sucking his belly in while he was standing on the scale and she looked at him kind of shook her head and she said you know that that's not going to help don't you you know you're not going to be lighter that's what she was thinking you're not going to be lighter just because you suck your belly in she said you know that's not going to help don't you and he looked at her and he said oh yes it does it's the only way I can see those numbers down there and so some of you can say amen right there the only way we can see the numbers after quarantine belly is to suck it in a little Genesis chapter 7 verse 5 going to jump to several verses here now give me just a few minutes but I want you to give me your time this morning. Focus in. Brother Bubba Browning said, Amen, brother. This is my house. This God is in his house this morning, and he's worshiping there. Brother uh, Jeff Bird, amen, as well. So I'm glad some of you are getting a touch of God. Look at verse 5. The Bible said, And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in. Look at verse 7. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Verse 10. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open, and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Now chapter 8, look at chapter 8 verse 4. And so they went in the ark and they've been there now for a good while. Chapter 8, verse 4, And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. Look down at verse 13. And it came to pass, look at this, in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. Now this is important. In the second month, on the seven and twentieth day of the month, the earth was dried, and God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives. Now back in chapter 7, it said it was the 600th year of Noah's life, the second month, the 17th day of the month, when those fountains of the great deep, they were already in the ark, and then those fountains of the great deep opened. Here in verse 13 of chapter 8, it says it was the 601st year, 
And then it says in verse 14, the second month, the 27th day. Keep that in mind. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless me now as I try and preach. I thank you so much for the sweet spirit. Thank you for those that have been texting saying that you're uh, blessing them in their house. And they're giving a big amen. We pray that you would help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Jeremy Garden text, amen. Getting a blessing there in their house. <clears throat> their little girl uh, calls me the creature. I want to say hello to her if she's looking. And so uh, praise the Lord for those getting a blessing. Now, I don't want to keep our attention, to be honest with you, <clears throat> on the problems we're facing right now in our world. I don't, I don't like to do that because I believe we'd be better off if we focus on the potential. And certainly uh, the last couple of Sunday nights, I have tried to take your eyes off of the bad and to focus your eyes on to what God is already doing in the praise reports today. I shared with you how that I was able to preach in Australia this week because of, listen, that, that is because they were not able to have their normal camp. If they were having their normal camp, I would not have had the privilege this year to go and speak to them. But God is using what's going on in the world for His good, and He has uh, made good come out of it. So I want to focus most of the time on the potential and not the problems. But with that being said, the Lord has laid this thought on my heart for today. <clears throat> and I say today because I plan to preach part two of it tonight. Please come back tonight, if you would, at 6 o'clock. I want to continue the thought. And so by way of introduction, I need to point out some things about Noah and his family that, that kind of make correlation to what we're going through right now. I believe Noah and his family could certainly understand the frustrations of a quarantine. I want you to think about that just for a minute. And I know some of you are very frustrated and, and uh, you're like me and you, you don't like how it's changed our life and how it's gotten us out of our routine and, and maybe some of the bad habits that it's helping to teach us and things like that. And I want you to know that Noah and his family, of all the families I could think of down through history, would certainly be one that could relate and could understand the frustrations of a quarantine. Now, I read in our verses several timeline verses. Several of those things when you're just reading through your Bible, you kind of don't pay attention to. You just brush right over. And, uh, but I want you to focus in just for a minute this morning because I want you to get a grasp of what they dealt with. What Noah and his family, his wife and his three sons and their wives, what they were dealing with in their life at this time. Can you imagine? Can you imagine just for a minute an unending literal storm for 40 days? Was it this week that we had that bad storm? Was it, I guess it was earlier in this week or last week. We had that bad storm in the middle of the night, lightning and thunder and wind blowing stuff down. And, uh, you know, some people woke up in it and then couldn't go back to sleep because it was so loud. Some people were afraid. I saw, uh, you know, some tweets and things about wondering if I was going to have a roof in the morning, wondering if it's going to blow us out of here. Can you imagine that for 40 days unending? I mean, listen, hurricane force winds, no doubt, taking place during the storm that brought the flood torrential rains. I don't think we can imagine really the kind of rain that was falling on them. I, the windows of heaven opened and God dumped on this earth torrential rains. Water also coming up from the ground. Listen, no doubt lightning, no doubt thunders. I'm telling you for 40 days unending. That means even during what should have been the daytime, the clouds have darkened the sky. The clouds have blocked the sun. And you look out and you can't see anything positive. And I don't mean for a few hours. I don't mean for a little time. I don't mean for a day or for a night. I mean for 40 days an unending storm raging in their life. Not a metaphorical storm. Hey, not a sort of a storm. I'm talking about a literal uh, unending disastrous storm in their world. 40 days. You know, time has kind of got crazy through this too. It's hard to know sometimes what even day of the week it is. Uh, it seems like the month of March was about 70 days long. I don't know if you felt like that. It didn't feel like March was ever going to end. But you know, when I started looking at it, if you go back to the last day that the kids were in school, which would have been a Friday, that thing all kind of blew up over that weekend, and we were going to try to bring ours back on Monday for half a day and get all their stuff, and it got so bad so quick we wasn't even able to do that. And so that Monday they came, I guess the 16th, and were able to pick up their first packets you know, if you look back to that last day that we were in school, it's been 37 days. Seems like longer than that, doesn't it? 37 days since they said the kids can't come back to school. Now we've been all locked up together. They were in this storm. Hey, the storm. Not just in the ark. They were in the storm for more days than we have dealt with yet in this quarantine time. 
Every day the boat just rocking back and forth, up and down, not knowing really how it was all going to go. And I understand that Noah was a man of faith. But listen, let's just take Noah out of the picture. What do you think them boys were thinking? Hey, they're wondering if daddy got this right. They're wondering, listen, God didn't speak to them boys. They didn't, if Noah had peace, God didn't speak to them boys. And so I wonder what it must have been like for 40 days this storm raged. Now listen, if you think you're tired of seeing the people in your family because you've been with them for 30 days or a month, and it's only been a month since we had our last service. We had that last service. It's been a little over a month ago that we had that last Wednesday night. Only a few people in here. Only a few in the teens. It's been just a month. Listen, how would you like it if you'd been like they have? By the way, Noah and his family, there were no headphones they could put on to get away. There was no Netflix that they could binge on or Disney+. Plus. Hey, there was no, uh, uh, they couldn't just put this stuff on. There was no PlayStation. There was no uh, going out for a walk. How about that? That's been one of the uh, best things for me is being able to get out and to exercise. Brother Marvin, I think, posted something about, hey, go in the woods. It's free. And you can get out there in the fresh air, and get, fresh air and get away for just a little while. You understand that Noah and his family couldn't take a walk like that. They couldn't get out in the woods and walk for a while. Uh, they couldn't put on the headphones and get away from the family that's driving them crazy because they've been locked up together. And I'm not talking about just the 40 days. Stay with me now. They were locked up in this wooden box with just those few people with nowhere to go, with nothing to distract them, their attention-wise, as far as technology. And it was over a year. I read it to you. 600th year of his life, second month, 17th day. Or first month, excuse me, 17th day is when the rain started. And then it came over here in chapter 8 and it said it was the 601st year of his life, the second month, the 27th day. And so I don't know, you know, if we start saying 365, you're talking about 375 days or a year plus 10 days, whatever the case may be, for a year in quarantine. Nowhere to go, nobody, listen, hey, you young people, I thank God that you have the ability to FaceTime your friends. I thank God that you have the ability to call them. I praise the Lord that we can do Facebook Live, did another silly one last night with our family, and at least y'all can see us, and we can see you commenting and communicating, and we can laugh, and listen, we can do live stream services, we can do the drive-in service, what a blessing it was just to physically see the church folk in their cars. Do you understand now, for a year, they had nothing like that, they they couldn't call their friends. Their friends were dead. Everybody was gone. They had no hope of connecting with anybody else right now. I just want you to grasp. We sometimes read these Bible stories, and I think because we know the miraculous ending to them, we don't fully give the, gra the gravity to their situations that it deserves. And some of you have been so frustrated for 37 days. You, I, I looked at a lot of funny uh, things this week about parents trying to homeschool their kids. And, and one of them talking about, uh, it said, my kids' hot lunch program this first week. And the first day, it was, uh, you know, something warm and macaroni and cheese. This that the other second day was a little better. The third day, it was just macaroni and cheese. Uh, the fourth day, it was Cheetos. And the fifth day, it was fix your own stinking lunch. That's what it was. And, and so I understand parents are already going a little bit crazy with uh, their kids and trying to homeschool and being locked up together. But I'm going to tell you something. Can you imagine? Imagine Noah and his family. I just tell you that because I want you to know I believe they could relate to quarantine. We're hearing now that depression is growing in these last 40 days in America. One mental health website said, quote, even when you're totally healthy, not having social interactions can hurt both your physical and mental well-being. Studies have shown loneliness can lead to diabetes, autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, cardiovascular disease, diseases, listen to this, and if you're already prone to depression, anxiety, and loneliness, you're hit even harder. And that's what's going on in our life when we do have all these ways to at least still connect with people. Can you use your imagination and think about what Noah and his family might have been going through emotionally? At least we can call. At least we can FaceTime. At least we can look on social media and, 
and see my family back in Kentucky and my little sister had that healthy baby boy and, and nobody really in the family has been able to be with that boy yet. My mom got to hold him uh, with a mask on and a gown on and just for a few minutes and then basically Tammy and them have been uh, quarantined there at their house for the baby's protection and so on and so forth and she jokes and says he's going to be 10 years old for any of us to get to meet him but I am thankful that I've been able to see him through the pictures and the videos and I've been able to call my sister but can you imagine the emotional stress that was going on in Noah and his family where they did not have the ability to phone call, FaceTime, social media. They couldn't call their friends, as I said, because there were no friends. I wonder how lonely they must have gotten. I wonder how disheartened and discouraged uh, they may have gotten in some of those moments when the storm just wouldn't quit. I mean, when, when it was another day and another day. And I know God told Noah it was going to be 40 days. And maybe he shared that with his family. But nonetheless, can you imagine uh, on day 38, 39, where there had been a, I mean, a ravaging storm for all those weeks in a row. I, I imagine they might have looked up and wondered if God had forgotten them. I wonder if somewhere along the way they might have looked up after the storm. I mean, the storm finally ends, and boy, I'm sure for a few days that was a blessing in and of itself. But can you imagine after they just began to drift aimlessly for the rest of that year? Listen now, no direction in life, not knowing where they were going, no steering wheel on the ark, hey, no location. They didn't know where they were. There was no, no land masses to document where we were, no destination. They didn't know where they were going. And one of the things that frustrates us is this lack of knowing when's this going to end and how's it going to end and what's everything going to be like when we get back. Noah and his family had none of that. And I wonder if sometimes uh, for those 300 more days that they just drifted aimlessly, did they think God had lost sight of them? I wonder, did they wonder if God had abandoned them? If they're like us, they probably did. I mean, we're just 37 days in. Those thoughts would creep into our hearts sometimes. But let me show you something wonderful this morning. And then we'll close here in just a second. Look at chapter 8, verse 1. I skipped this verse. I wanted to save it for just right now. The Bible said, and if you underline in your Bible, you ought to underline this first phrase. And God remembered Noah. You ought to, you ought to underline that and say amen right there. And God, glory to God. God remembered Noah. That's the thought for this morning. That's the thought for tonight. I'm going to preach some other places in the Bible that God remembered some folks in some situations. But right here, God remembered Noah. That'd be the title, God remembered them. And God hasn't forgotten us. Now, I need to help you with something. I need to help you, and I'm almost done. Let me help you here at the end of the message. When we consider the word remembered, listen to me. When we think about the word remembered, we seem to have this idea that it was something that we once had in our mind That we have lost. That we had it and we lost it. And then through some provocation, some something we saw or something we heard or something we experienced, that thing has been brought back to our mind. That's the concept we have when we read the word remembered. We have the idea that we had it and then it was lost to us. And then maybe somebody reminded us of it or something reminded us of it. But I want to encourage you just to win it. Stay with me now. If you look in Webster's 1828 dictionary, the very first and primary definition of the word remembered means this. Kept, K-E-P-T, kept in mind. Kept in mind. You say, what does that mean, preacher? It means this, that God did not just remember them in chapter 8, verse 1. God did not just all of a sudden regain something that he had lost. I'm telling you, God didn't just remember them in chapter 8, verse 1. Because forget means to lose the remembrance of. Forget means to lose the remembrance of, but remembered means he kept in his mind. What I'm telling you is that through all those dark days, through all those times when they looked up and wondered what God was doing and where God was, our God had never lost Noah. He had never lost his family. God had kept them in his mind the whole time. He saw them during the storm. Hey, he saw them during their struggles. He knew exactly where they were when they had 
had to get off by themselves because they were so frustrated maybe with their family, so frustrated with what was going on, and they were about to lose it, and they needed to get off by themselves and let off some steam. God knew right where they were. He never lost them. He kept them in his mind. That's what God said in chapter 8, verse 1. Hey, he never lost sight when they were in the bed at nights. Maybe those sons, maybe those daughter-in-laws. We don't know how much of God they knew. We don't know how spiritual they had been before all this. I wonder, no doubt, if there were times that those daughter-in-laws got frustrated with all this and they got burdened with all this. Hey, thinking about their family that had died in that flood. And their family didn't get on the ark. Their family's still back there. And I wonder at times they would roll over because they didn't want their husbands to see those tears in their eyes or hear the sniffle in their voice. But I'm telling you that God saw them right then when they would roll over. And God knew where they were. He never lost them. He remembered them the whole time. You see, our God has never accidentally forgotten anything. The only thing He can't remember are our sins that He made a decision to forget when we got saved. Isaiah 43 verse 25, God said I, even I, am He that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. God made a choice to forget our sins. He's never forgotten anything accidentally. And I want you to know the same is true in your life today. God knows right where you are. Just like with Noah and his family, he has kept you in his heart this whole time. And not only will the storm stop one of these days, and not only will the sun shine again one of these days, but a rainbow is coming. Amen. What's that rainbow? That's the promises of God. That's that God's got a plan, the plan of God. And the rainbow is coming. But you know what the trick is for us, fellas? You guys that are in here with me this morning, you know what the trick is? We've got to have our head up. You know, you can miss a rainbow if your head ain't up. And the Bible says, the psalmist wrote it like this. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. The trick is for us to remember God has not forgotten us. When it says that he remembered Noah, it wasn't that he had lost thought of Noah. No, no, no. He had remembered Noah all the way. He had kept Noah. That definition, kept in mind. He had never forgotten Noah. He had never forgotten the promise that he made to take care of him and the ark that he told him to build. He had never, he had never forgotten what he said he was going to do with Noah and his family after the ark and how he was going to use them to replenish the earth. God remembered them and Jesus remembers you today. Some of you are struggling financially. God remembers you. Some of you are struggling physically and you've got people you love struggling physically. Brother Dan, Miss Anita Valini, burden for Nathan, no doubt. God remembers Nathan. And God keeps us in his heart. And we've just got to make sure that through all of this we keep looking up from whence cometh our help. Because one of these days the, the 40 day storm ended and at least the sun came out. And even then though the drifting and the drifting and the drifting... And then one day, old Noah sent out the dove and it came flying back. You know where you see the dove flying? You see him up. And then one day they got to walk off that ark on some dry ground. And looking up, God put the rainbow of promise in the sky. Lift up your head. I believe our redemption draweth nigh as well. Jesus is coming. Be encouraged this morning. If you're here and you're away from the Lord, if you're watching and listening and you've been away from God and your head is hanging low, I got good news for you. I don't want to jump ahead, but one of the people that God remembered is Samson. And Samson had gotten himself in a mess, not because he had been following God, but because of his sin. God don't even forget us in our sin. He kept him in his heart. And so be encouraged this morning. Let me pray, then don't sign off. Let me give you just one or two more announcements. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the word of God. How powerful it is right now in these times. Lord, Noah and his family probably understand better than anybody the idea of quarantine and the frustrations that come. But Lord, I'm thankful that through all of that time, you never lost them. In your heart, they were kept. They were kept in your mind. They were remembered all the way through. And Lord, you're doing the same for your children. You said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. You are with us. 
You are looking down on us. Now help us to look up. Help us to get our head up and have victory in our heart, knowing that the sun will shine, that the storm will end, uh, and that the rainbow is coming. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let me just mention a couple other things. Don't forget church tonight, 6 o'clock. Going to preach another part of this God Remembered Them message. And then going to try to have live singing in here tonight. We're going to keep it under 10 people. Make sure we're abiding by all the rules. We're going to have some, uh, hopefully some folks come in and sing live for us tonight. I think that's a blessing. And so pray that God will be on them. Pray that God will bless the service tonight. And then uh, I want you to remember the, the tuition at the school. I mentioned it Wednesday night. Please help us if you would. The month of April and May, we have discounted the tuition, knowing that it's obviously not the same. But all the teachers, I'm telling you, some of the teachers are working harder now than they were before having to make these videos and do it. They're doing a great job. And so uh, if you would be faithful to give into that tuition. And remember this week, we are going to collect some non-perishables for some bus families. If you want to help with that. Just keep your ears open. God bless you, church. We'll see you tonight.